Welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm Keith McGrath. I'm here with Jack McGuire, and we're going to talk about some players that have an opportunity to impress Stephen Kenny over the next few weeks uh, as the Premier League and Championship resumes. Um, obviously, there's a few ones that stand out more than others, players like Parrott, Abafemi, and Aaron Connolly, but we're going to try and leave it to players who haven't yet featured for the national site. Uh, yes, we, we've made a list of uh, six players that we think could impress Kenny uh, when the Championship and the Premier League resumes. Uh, we certainly think they're in with a shout uh, to play a part in the action. And uh, Kian, who do you think, who is the first man you think uh, could have Well, when, when you put the question to me, Jack, there was a few that stood out. But obviously, like I said there, Avafemi, Parrott and Connolly are the big three. But like, like we said, trying to look at a few other options, I went with uh, yeah. Connor Ronan at Wolves. Uh, Ronan was given a new contract at Wolves last summer, uh, I think in May last summer. And that was a good sign for a lot of people. You know, um, he spent, spent the season on loan uh, in Eastern Europe and he had a really good season. And he went to Blackpool on loan in January. And I uh, was playing fairly well at a, at a decent level for Blackpool, but some good news that came in the last few weeks is that at the end of May this year, he was recalled by Wolves uh, with a view to using him in the Premier League for the next um, next couple of games. And, I mean, it'll be the case for all the players we talk about, but the fact that there's five substitutes and games coming thick and fast, it's a really good opportunity for players uh, who wouldn't necessarily get these first-team opportunities in the regular season to shine. Um, I was reading about Ro uh, Ronan there, and he burst onto the scene a couple of years back when Wolves beat Liverpool in the FA Cup. Uh, I think Wolves might have been a championship team at the side, or maybe even that was the year they were in League One. But that aside, he was a young player, and there was a bit of talk for him to go play for, or go represent England. He was um, born in England, in Rochdale, but he's gladly, and we're delighted to say that he's representing Ireland. Um, and like I said, he's a fantastic player. He's a centre midfielder, an attacking centre midfielder, an attack midfielder, a very versatile player, uh, strong with both feet, and he's played twice for the N21s. So, the way Wolves play, you know, they play that 5-3-2 or 3-5-2 system and it should be a good opportunity, you know, a lot of running that midfield with five substitutes, a man, a young player with legs coming on. Someone just a little bit unpredictable. We saw it with Connolly early on the season. I think uh, Ronan could certainly be a, a fantastic option for um, for Nuno Espirito Santo uh, and Stephen Kenny, uh, for that matter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's a fantastic player and there's certainly uh, bright things for him in the future. And mm -hmm. the first player that I went with uh, was Jason Malumbe, obviously, Seriously talented player with Millwall at the moment. Uh, he's he's only 20 years old. Uh, his full career ahead of him. He is a centre midfielder, and you know he's made appearances in the championship. He's been a regular for for Millwall in the championship in the FA Cup mm -hmm. and the, the the League Cup. Like he's he's had appearances at each underage level for Ireland. And you know from what I've seen of him, you know he's a great footballing brain. You know he's a quick player. He's quick on the ball, and you know he keeps the ball close to him. He moves the ball when he has to. His vision is unbelievable. I know that's certainly something that Ireland could benefit from uh, going forward. You know, he's a cool head in the centre of the field. That kind of player, he, you know, he starts the attack. He makes that with that wide ball or that ball through the centre, and it's it's something that we could we could use with the with the new strikers coming through as well. You know. Yeah, I and, certainly uh, think um, the, the Millwall fans have been big fans of him when he's come down there. You know, I think they've a lot of them spoke about his clear head, um, and yeah. probably want to keep him permanently at the end of the season. But I'd say he'll be d definitely a good option. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and Millwall, their their next couple of games, uh, Derby, Barnsley, and Swansea. You know, they're eight in the championship at the moment, mm -hmm. and they'll certainly be pushing for promotion. Even Stephen Kenny said, you know, Jason Malumbi, he's he's helping uh, Millwall towards promotion. So, like, obviously, Jason Malumbi, it's a name in Stephen Kenny's head, a player that he's thinking about. You know, and there's absolutely no reason why he can't come into the squad. You know, like mm -hmm. he he came through Railway Athletic, but he's been with Brighton. You know, Brighton under 18s, under 23s. You know, his he will be going back uh, to Brighton, obviously, when his loan is over. But there's absolutely no reason why he can't prove to Stephen that uh, he can perform on the big stage. And there's every chance that he will break into the squad. And I'd be delighted to see a player of his uh, of his talent, you know, hopefully have yeah. an effect in the coming years. Absolutely. I'd say he's been a very important play player for uh, Millwall this season, from what I see, yeah. mostly obviously on Twitter, not the most fashionable team. But to have shown at such a young age, hopefully, that he's uh, such a leader, hopefully he can uh, have a bit of an effect at Brighton next year, you know, that... Yeah. They're a bit of an unfancy team in the Premier League. They could probably do with a bit of excitement in that midfield, and hopefully he can be that option. But um, I suppose for the That's next true. player to move on, um, I chose Connor Masterson, former Liverpool centre half. And I remember when he burst onto the scene at Liverpool, he was very highly rated, and he was included in a number of squads. Um, when uh, I suppose when Klopp had taken over, I think around that sort of time, he signed for him on his 16th birthday, um, and it, it, it was a large fee. I remember at the time he was really, really highly rated, and um, he was included in Champions League squads, and he was getting the odd uh, substitute appearance in, in cup competitions, but it never really worked out for him at Liverpool. I think there was a few injuries. Yeah. And um, at the start of this season, he moved to QPR. 
And again, things have been a little bit shaky for him this season. He's only made six league appearances for them. But he can play in the centre defence and in the centre midfield. Um, and he's shown that he's at the level when he's been asked to do so. And like we said, games coming thick and fast. Um, keep your aren't having the best season. But I'm sure when he's called, they're, that, that he'll he'll shine. You know, the, the opportunity should be there now with games, like we can see in the Premier League, games every day nearly. Um, and not the same sort of week-to-week breaks that the uh, players might be used to. So... Aside from just the substitutions, maybe we can see a few more starts from, from Masterson. And while he mightn't be someone on top of uh, Kenny's list in the same way Malumbi is, he's certainly someone who can make his way into that area. You know, Ireland's uh, depth at centre-half. We obviously have some fantastic centre-halves like Egan and Duffy and Kieran Clark even is having a fantastic season. But um, Masterson has that opportunity to come into the tier below. You know, once you go beyond those three players, you're looking at Kevin Long, you're looking at a few different players. So there's a, there's a space certainly there for him if he can show it over the next couple of weeks. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And, you know, looking at that uh, back line as well, another man that I thought was Darrow O'Shea. Obviously, like mm-hmm. you say, it's a very competitive line. You know, it's it's going to be hard to break into the Ireland team. But he, he's 21, like, you know, he has every chance. He has plenty of experience too. You know, he was with uh, with Hereford and with Exeter City. And he was actually a vote of young player of the year at Hereford. He scored seven goals. And, you know, from what I've seen of him, they're like from set pieces and stuff, he was very effective, you know, it, as well as getting forward and getting his head on the ball. He kind of hung around the edge of the box and he picked up a lot of ball at the edge of the box and scored goals from the edge of the box too, you know. And he's he, it's good to see that threat, you know, that attacking kind of streak in him, you know, is obviously a good thing going forward. And, well, he joined the West Brom senior team in 2019, but, you know, hopefully he can keep that run going. He can keep getting, getting played, you know. And the more mm-hmm. Stephen Kenny sees of him, He'll obviously be looking to, you know, give these young players an opportunity if he can. He knows what it's like from the under twenty ones. You know, Dara has played with the under twenty ones, the under eighteens and the under nineteens at Ireland level. So, you know, a lot of, who came through St. Kevin's Boys, obviously some of the greatest mm-hmm. Irish internationals have came through there. So you know, that's that says it all really. He has the, the natural talent and I'm sure that he can impress Kenny, you know. It mightn't be straight away, but over time, like West Brom's next game, Birmingham, Brentford and Sheffield Wednesday, like they're tough games, but, you know, there's certainly opportunity for him to show what he's made of, you know, mm-hmm. in these kind of big yeah, games. It gives him that platform. I, I remember watching him um, at the start of the season. I think he was making regular appearances and a very comfortable yeah. player on the ball, which is good for Ireland. You know, we've seen it more and more with our defence. So as Duffy would have been the first that seemed reasonably comfortable with the ball in comparison yeah. to other players. But, you know, players like Egan, Doherty, Coleman, um, Stevens, all these players, very good. And he seems to be similar in that vein. He's not too attacking as a right back, even though he scores goals. Like you said, it's mostly from set pieces. So yeah. maybe slotting into a centre of defence for Ireland. But like you said, I think the same point that I made with Masterson is there's that opportunity to break into the, the tier yeah. below, into the squad. You know, the, the squad depth at centre half isn't the same as the, the starting lineup. I know Kenny said that we had one of the best defences in Europe on paper, and I yeah. do agree with him with that. You know, it's, it's, it can be hard to get together a solid defence at international level. Uh, the same way you kind of club level, but Ireland have it. But kind of if one of those players drops out, it, whether it be left back, centre half, or right back, you're kind of struggling. You know, your your strength and depth isn't as good as you'd like to be. So, like you said, O'Shea and Masterson both have chances. But I think uh, another one, uh, another option, and it's only really come to light in the last few days after a bit of news um, of Fraser at Bournemouth, who uh, rejected a short term contract. The really ridiculously quick wing, winger, to be fr- uh, to be frank, uh, rejected his lo- his short term deal to play the rest of the season, uh, leaving Bournemouth a little bit at a loss for, I suppose, a player in that position. And uh, they've got a young fella, uh, Gavin Kilkenny. Obviously, I'm sure there are a lot of people who have heard of him. Uh, tw- uh, 20 years old from Dublin. He's a fantastic lo- young ball-playing midfielder. And um, I think a great option. I read Eddie Howe speaking incredibly highly of him. He made two appearances this season in the Carabao Cup, one against Forest Green, uh, where they went through and they were knocked out in the next round. But he played. He started both games, and that I suppose proves that Bournemouth want to give him the opportunity when these opportunities arise. Especially, I know it'll be a relegation battle, but if Bournemouth can take a little bit of an upturn in form, maybe the opportunities will be a little bit more. And um, he's he's a really fantastic prospect coming through. I think it's fairly plain to see for anyone that they're going to be scrambling around in a sense for a player to fill in that um, role from Fraser. Um, there isn't really an obvious candidate, I suppose, um, who because Fraser offers such a direct and uh, so it was unusual um, style of play. But there's no reason Kenny can't slot in. Like I said, started two games in the in the EFL Cup. I'm not sure if it even is still, Car- still the Carabao Cup. But um, yeah, like I said, uh, a really good, uh, solid centre midfield player. Um, only 20 years of age, so he'll have plenty of time to show it, you know, uh, compared to some other players. Yeah. But 
maybe not one that will be directly in Kenny's mind uh, in the same way, but he's featured at under-21 level for Ireland, and I think that there's no reason he can't take that step up to the Premier League. Like we saw it last year with Mark Travers at Bournemouth, that he was yeah. given uh, a bit of trust from Eddie Howe, and um, when he was given that trust, he, he shown. So hopefully we can see the same out of Kenny going into the last few weeks of the season. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, you know, obviously for Ireland going forward, the more young players that we have playing at the top level, you know, mm-hmm. it's obviously, we hope it'll come together then with the national team. And that's definitely something that we can see. You know, Adam Ida, he's he's one of Norwich's star players, you know. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, when he made appearances, he's, he's still only 19. And the centre forward for Norwich, he scored a hat-trick against Preston. He's been a prolific scorer for the underage with Ireland. Like, you know, he's been under 17, 18, 19, 21. All of them, and he scored scored goals at each level, and mm-hmm. he'll be familiar with Stephen Kenny, you know, as with a lot of these young players, they will be. So they're obviously going to be, you know, there's a huge chance that they'll they'll catch Stephen Zoy when it comes to the senior team as well. And mm-hmm. the thing about uh, Adam Ida, like he's his his pace is unbelievable. He's incredibly fast, you know. He isn't afraid to take the man on either. You know, if he's running up against a, a defender, he's going to take them on. He's not going to to try and you know play the ball off. He's not afraid. And I think that's a good thing. You know, we've seen good link-up play at the under-21 level with Parrot and with other players, with Conor Rowan, and like you mentioned. Like, we've seen great link-up play with them. And I think that's something that should be able to come up to the senior team if we can keep working on it. And even mm-hmm. Stephen Kenny said, you know, he was talking about David McGoldrick there in the, an interview there. And he was saying how he's a key part. He, he creates goals. And hopefully that, uh, you know, the likes of Malumbi uh, can link up with uh, McGoldrick and the, all these young players coming through, the young strikers, the likes of Parrot, like you said, Conley, that they can link up with McGoldrick, they can play off him. And hopefully, hopefully, he'll be like kind of a, a mentor in a way, I suppose, you know, mm-hmm. that he can kind of encourage them. And they can play off him. And, you know, like Adam Ida, there's certainly big things to come for him. You know, he's, yeah, absolutely. he's you know, performing under pressure. He's been on the big stage, you know, he's shown he can do it. And, you know, he never turns away from the opportunity to show what he's made of, you know. Yeah, he's a uh, like you know he's only 19 years age. Like you said, he uh, yeah. came through at college recruiting teams in Cork, who would be yeah. I suppose the closest you can say to something like St Kevin's Boys, a very established club in Cork linked yeah. to the college. Um, he made Premier League appearances so far for Norwich, and obviously that hat trick against Preston was fantastic. Yeah. And I remember I think McCarthy was actually doing the punditry for that game and said that he was really impressed by Ida. So you know, if Mick is was impressed, you'd hope Kenny, who we assume will have a little bit more. Um, of an eye on younger players will too. I yeah. just had a quick look there for Ida's underage record with Ireland. It's fantastic. You know, he scored 14 goals good, at yeah. 17 level, two at under 18 and 19, and five at under 21 level. So, you know, he's proven he can put on the green shirt and score prol- prolifically, and hopefully he can do the yeah. same for Norwich. You know, even if they were to, they are bottom of the Premier League, if they were to go down and he's won their championship strikers next season, yeah. it would be a fantastic platform for him to build on. You know, if, if they were to bounce back to the Premier League with Ida as a key part of that squad, it, it, years back, you can see the same thing happened to players like Kevin Doyle, and you know, there's plenty of Irish strikers who've come through that that system of the championship and shown that they can score goals. So, hopefully, he can do the same for for Norwich and in a few months or years uh, for Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, just to to go forward to Stephen Kenny's first few games as Ireland manager, mm-hmm. Bulgaria away is the first mm-hmm. game, and then we're at home to Finland in the Aviva. Then is the Sunday mm-hmm. after the Bulgaria game. So, you know, Stephen said he feels their ideal preparation for the Slovakia game. You know, mm-hmm. it's great to have players available, he said as well, these young players to create competition for the lads already mm-hmm. in the squad. And I'm sure, you know, Bulgaria and Finland, tough teams. Like, he mentioned Timu Pukki as well. As you said, mm-hmm. you know, he scored something like 10 goals in qualifying in the last campaign. And, you know, he's obviously going to be a threat, you know. Getting used to, you know, playing against players like him, tackling players like him, it's going to be great preparation for the Slovakia game. And we can hope that with those trial games, you know, leading up to Slovakia, we can see some young lads maybe get a play, you know, show what mm-hmm. they're made of because it's on the big stage like that, you know, that they really do shine, in my opinion. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like the priority, obviously, it's, it's Nations League games. There, there is qualification on the line yeah. to an extent, but there's bigger fish to fry. It will be in Kenny's mind, I'm sure. You know, those playoff games. Yeah. Um, and look, if if we could get a one win or even just two points from those first two games, um, yeah. I'd take that. Uh, so long as Kenny was getting what he felt he needed out of players ahead of the Slovakia game. Like we like I said, the Slovakia game is the is the the, the really important one in that period. And um, we can focus on the Nations League afterwards. But um yeah, it, it, it's gonna be interesting. I, I think for years um the Irish squads have been threatened at going stale. These young players, like you say, offer that chance to refresh. Yeah. And um 
it, it's really a good thing to see. You know, it, it's it's absolutely fantastic for for Ireland to have these options and for yeah. for that that competition to come true. And I hope Kenny. I don't think Kenny's first squad will be. You know, it's not going to be fifteen different players in mixed last squad. But, yeah, yeah, people are calling themselves saying players like McLean are over. Um, are finished. McLean and Kenny worked together at Derry, and they were hugely. I know uh, Kenny is a huge fan of McLean's, and vice versa. So yeah. I don't think it'll be um, anything being torn up, or you know, I think it'll be gradual changes. But it's exciting. I think exciting is the, the main thing, and it'll be great to yeah. keep an eye on these Irish players over the next few weeks. For sure, yeah. Like you know, even under Mick, you know, Aaron Connolly was given his opportunity, mm-hmm. competitive debut, you know, in a big game. Like so, you know the likes of these players, there's definitely a, an opportunity for them. And like you say, there won't be a radical change straight away. There'll be, you know, kind of opportunities given here and there, maybe a sub. But it's all to look forward to, I think, anyway. And we 100%. have to hope that the, the only way is up for Ireland from here, you know, looking at the young like, talent. We, we've mentioned all these exciting players, and I know I mentioned them earlier, but like, when's the last time we had an Irish player nominated for the European Golden Boy? It's unlikely exactly, he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll win it. It is a fairly long list, but that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's a huge positive for Irish football fans to be able to say Michael Abafemi was nominated for a Golden Boy and he doesn't get the credit he deserves in some ways uh, yeah, compared absolutely. to some other players like he scored that that goal he scored against Chelsea around Christmas time was absolutely fantastic yeah. I think that's indicative of what's coming for Ireland in the next few years hopefully anyway you know we, we can only hope but I suppose yeah. w- with Jack Jack we'll, we, we'll leave it there a, a nice short and sweet yeah. video for people um, cheers for ask, asking me on I suppose it was your idea but um, absolutely fantastic no but yeah, it's, it's great to have a discussion and just see you know Thanks very much for watching. Obviously, you know, it's just a short one just to give you an idea of who's coming through, just our background and stuff. But thanks very much. Leave leave a like or let us know what you think of it anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, hopefully we'll get back to more of these videos, giving you a rundown on some of the some of the players coming through in the future. Yeah, and if we missed out on anyone, um, feel free to, to school us down below in the comments anyway. But uh, yeah. thanks a million to everyone who checked us out. Perfect. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.